I came here to change attitudes tonight, and I think I've done that. Um, I want to leave you with something now uh, to show that knowledge is power. It's a true story, actually. And um, we were talking earlier about third world sweatshops, and they really are awful places. And there's women and children that, that are abused, and they get, literally get a few pence an hour. And it's for big conglomerate companies to make billions of pounds. And um, I was shopping with a friend of mine a couple of years ago. His name was Rob, and he had a sudden death in the family, and he had to get a suit for the funeral. And he was in a band, and he was on the doll. He didn't have a suit to his name. We went to these sort of cheap places um, in Oxford Street, and uh, one bloke said, oh, I've got a, a, a lovely suit, um, £29. And I thought, what is this going to look like? I couldn't wait for him to have to buy the suit. <laughs> I went over to it, and it was all right, and I was gutted. It was just like a classic sort of dark suit, and it was, it was nice, and um, it had an electric blue sort of satin lining, and um, he was made up. So just to piss on his bonfire, I said, well, if it's that cheap, and it's that well made, and it's not in a sale, it means someone's been exploited. He went, what? I went, yeah, it's awful. It's like women and children exploited, and you just be adding to the problem, right? And he didn't buy it. And he went and sold a guitar at Record and Tape Exchange and bought a suit for 150 quid. And I felt bad, but then I thought, well, I was probably right. If, you know, they probably have used like really awful, cheap labour. And so just by doing that, and it, even though it's one person's little change, if everyone changes it, then we can all, do you know what I mean, make a difference. Still, 29 quid, though. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? He also told the one about the uh, boy who cried wolf. A boy looking after his sheep. Gets a bit bored. It is boring. Just making sure you've got all... Probably tiring as well, because if you're counting them, you're probably getting a bit drowsy, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, so... Gets a bit boring. <sighs> Nothing to do here in... the Bible. <laughs> anyway, so... A long time ago. And he goes, um... Uh, it was just a Monday. That's the worst, isn't it? And he's just bored. And he goes, I know what. I'll have a laugh. And he goes, uh, wolf, 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 wolf. And the villagers come up and goes, where's the wolf? They go, no, there's no wolf. He goes, oh, you fool. <laughs> so the next day, he thinks, well, that worked a tree. I'll do that again. He goes, wolf, wolf, wolf. Where's the wolf this time? Still no wolf. Oh, you oh. <laughs> Third day, there really is a wolf. And he goes, wolf, 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 wolf. But the villagers don't come because they don't believe him. And we were told the moral of that is never tell a lie. No, it isn't. The moral of that is never tell the same lie twice. <laughs> Terrible lesson for kids. <laughs> Nursery rhymes. Do you know, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, which I later learned meant his cranium. <laughs> I thought his hat fell off or something. <laughs> and Jill came tumbling after. And that is a true fable of the time, of the, I think the 16th century, about two illicit lovers who used to go up to the, the hill out of the sight of the villagers and have it off behind their spouse's back. What's the moral there for... What is that? Don't fuck around with sluts or you get your head caved in. <laughs> I know. I've never worked out what the moral of Humpty Dumpty is. <laughs> I can only think of... Don't sit on a wall if you're an egg. <laughs> How is that applicable to an eight-year-old human? I don't... You mean that go, well, what's the moral there? Huh. Don't sit on a wall if you're an egg. What? <laughs> of course I'll... Of course I wouldn't. Well, I would... How... What do you mean, if you're an egg? It... It's not going to happen, is it? What? Are there eggs reading that going, oh, I'm just going to jump up there? Fucking hell. <laughs> Good job. Thank... Oh, God. Wait, don't get on there if you're an egg. No, why not? Go, read that. Fuck. <laughs> Don't send horses to perform medical procedures. <laughs> of course they couldn't put him together again. Of course... It's obvious, they haven't got the dexterity. It's obvious. I wouldn't have sent them in the first place. No, it was an experiment. Don't experiment. They can't... They can't even scrub up. They can't. <laughs> they haven't got thumbs, let alone opposable thumbs. They couldn't, they couldn't sew to save their life. They couldn't... If I had to design a perfect egg-crushing device, it would be a hoof. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're king's horses or Steptoe's horse. Don't... 
<laughs> all the king's horses. Certainly don't send all of them. <laughs> it's going to be chaos. <laughs> what if we'd have been invaded by France that day? The bloke comes running to the bloke in charge. He goes, you in charge of all the king's horses? And all the king's men, yeah. Well, the French are coming. The what? <laughs> Where are all the king's horses and all the king's men? The French are, are coming to Dover. They're quick. Where are they? Up to the egg. What? <laughs> what? I, 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 the egg. <laughs> what are you talking about? I sent them to mend an egg. Are you fucking mental? Are you mental? <laughs> they can't mend an egg. Oh, no. Also, I only know that he is an egg from pictorial evidence. <laughs> and he is clearly an egg. An egg thin. An egg with eyes. <laughs> Things, right? And trousers. But that's not mentioned in the whole thing. That would be the first thing I'd mention. Never mind. I'd go, once, right, there was an egg that could climb walls. <laughs> Left that out. <laughs> Can't forget that moral. Well, if your surname is Dumpty, <laughs> don't call your firstborn Humpty. <laughs> He's already an egg. <laughs> like, that's not enough for stigma. <laughs> How's the baby? It's an egg. <laughs> Just an egg. Oh, really? What are you going to call it? Humpty Dumpty? Well, don't make it worse, don't. <laughs> That is a wind-up, that... <laughs> just call him Johnny or something. Just put a balaclava on him. Just say he's a f The worst they get is Fatty Johnny. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, the egg. <laughs> he's gonna get the piss ripped out of him. <laughs> Probably jumped off the wall. <laughs> has, uh, has everyone heard of Carl Pilkington? Because there's a bit... Yeah. He's my producer on my radio show. I'll just quickly... But for those who haven't heard of him, um, He's a guy, talking about attitudes, he's a man whose attitude hasn't changed from about the age of five. <laughs> he's from Manchester, and you can ask him anything and he's got an opinion on it. It's usually... It were rubbish, but... <laughs> right, uh, example, OK. Um, uh, well, just, I tell him about I'm doing this show. I said, I'm doing a show called Politics. He went, why? And you can't answer it. <laughs> and he said, you want to talk about that David Blunkett? <sighs> I went, why, what's he done? He went, oh, he's up to his old tricks again. <laughs> he's only gone and banned people having sex in public, hasn't he? <laughs> and I went, well, yeah, but surely that's a good thing, Carl. And he went, yeah, but would he have done it if he could see? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a twisted logic, you know. <laughs> All right, we were... We were once on air, this was. We were talking about blind dates, you know, things. Have you had a blind date? And halfway through, Carl just piped up and went, I went on a blind date once. <laughs> I went, he goes, yeah, I was all right, yeah. And what did you do? I went for a drink and that. <laughs> was she nice? Yeah, she was really good. Yeah, she was really fun. Yeah, it was great. Did you see her again? No. Oh. She had a problem with her marrow. I went, oh, what? She had a problem with her marrow. Her bone marrow. I went, oh. She went, yeah, she had a wasting disease. So I thought, what's the point? <laughs> On air. And so I, I flushed, I went, I went, oh, Carl, oh, Carl, if she's listening, you're for it. He went, she'll be dead by now. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'll just tell you one more before I go, one more, right. This was last year, during Wimbledon week. Again, on air, he said, did you watch any of Wimbledon last night? I went, no. What was it? They let some little wheelchair fellas have a go on centre court. <laughs> little wheelchair fellas. <laughs> no irony, right? And I went, all right, yeah. Any good? He went, no, it was rubbish. <laughs> I went, why? He went, they couldn't get a rally going. <laughs> and I went, I went, well, Carl, to be fair, they're in chairs on grass. He went, don't put it on telly then. <laughs> and I'm. On air. And I went, oh, wow. I said, uh, that everyone's entitled to be, you know, tell you, well, yeah. Well, let them do something they can do then. <laughs> and I went, foolishly, I went, like what? <laughs> and he said, swing ball. 
Thanks so much. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.